Okay, going to take a look at uh, some other shots. Once again, I'm sorry I'm pressed for time this evening, but uh, I actually, uh, yeah, obviously this is the most mundane object in the world to uh, do rear curtain sync with, but, um, you know, stop taking TTL shots with your speed light, your expensive speed light, that I assume that you uh, probably paid a, a lot of money for, and... Uh, Start experimenting with the stroboscopic effects, as I showed you in the prior video. I know you've actually seen uh, these sort of uh, ghostly uh, after effects. Uh, they're great for uh, action shots uh, to bring drama and uh, action to, like, bicyclists, runners. Um, they're just countless applications. This is a rear curtain sink, and uh, it's extremely easy to do and uh, very effective, especially if you're shooting... Uh, um, certain uh, sports photography uh, where a person or an object is uh, well illuminated um, by a, uh, a halogen light or uh, a fluorescent lighting you can actually change the final shot and capture the person at the last second what happens is, is that your speed light fires uh, right before the shutter drops so if you have a thirtieth of a second uh, one twenty-ninth of that second uh, will be the action as caught by the natural lighting or whatever lighting it is that you use. Right now I'm using red LEDs and at the last second the shutter is dropping um, on uh, the object uh, in a swing, in an arc. And uh, you can actually get some really fascinating effects. And uh, it's not at all hard to do. And uh, all I've done is... Excuse me. As I've brought the object over here, I've actually got a SC29 cable directly underneath my object. What I've done is I've illuminated vis-a-vis -vis red LED, and uh, I've taken uh, uh, when I've taken uh, one tenth and uh, quarter second shots of object in motion. Um, you know, apply this to anything that you know that you can add drama and composition to your shot. Not a boring shot like I just showed you, but for purposes of you thinking about using and experimenting with your speed light, all you have to do is go into your camera slash settings and uh, change it to rear curtain sync. And whatever your shutter speed is, there is a limitation, of course. Some of the most uh, fascinating uh, stuff is uh, people have uh, uh, taken... Uh, a really neat, uh, 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 like for example, attached uh, a strobe to a cyclist, and you actually see the cyclist uh, in various frames on a, a time exposure coming down the street. In the very last second, uh, right before uh, he arrives, uh, either rear curtain sink or fire the flash by hand. Firing the flash by hand at the last second of the shot is, of course, no different than a rear curtain sink. Um, it's a lot easier to time it by hand, especially when you're talking about uh, someone uh, um, moving or like a moving car. You can uh, one of some of the great uh, street shots are uh, rear curtain sinks. Like you'll catch a car coming by, you know, 15 miles an hour down a very slow street. You know, to catch some of the action or drama, Kept, capture people, someone walking by. You'll capture the illumination of their clothing. Um, as uh, they pass through the frame, uh, doing a tripod shot. Uh, you can even do it handheld and capture some of the blur of the shot and at the very last second freeze uh, your primary or foreground subject by uh, applying a rear curtain sink. So just start experimenting with your speed light. This stuff is really not that hard and everybody's so afraid. Now this obviously isn't the best video in the in the world by any comparisons as an example I'm just trying to get you to use and experiment your speed light you know just throw your camera into rear curtain sink um, you'll notice uh, that uh, if you have an advanced um, SB 800, 900, 910, 700 so forth it will fire a flash as soon as the shutter release and if you think there's a problem it's not what it's doing is it's metering the scene it isn't going to affect the exposure then at the very last before the shutter drops it fires the primary flash so don't be afraid by uh, your rear curtain sink uh, firing twice. You're going to say, well, I just took the shot. As soon as the shutter opens, it took a tiny burst, and then as the rear curtain, uh, as the curtain on my camera closed, it fired the primary shot at the very last uh, bit, of a, a bit of a second. Now, that's normal. Uh, you can actually get out of that by going to manual setting. We'll talk about that later. 
But in TTL rear curtain sink, all it's doing is metering uh, for the final uh, exposure. So it's uh, doing a pre-flash metering. So that is normal. So don't think your camera or your your advanced speed light is defective. Um, just start experimenting. You know, just start thinking of your camera as a time machine. And uh, by opening up your shutter, and uh, not by much, it could be as, little, you know, as much as a tenth of a second. It's like, well, I can't handheld, you know, my, uh, I can't handheld uh, my camera at the fourth of a second or a tenth of a second. But when it comes to speed light photography, you gotta start, you gotta do this. You have to. And it's one of those important things is you gotta get out of your head that, well, you know, I can't, uh, I can't handhold my uh, speed light at a tenth of a second, whatnot. Um, you know, it's just going to be a blurry image, and that doesn't matter. When you're talking about low light stuff, you know, your speed light becomes your primary shutter. If you get some blur in the background, uh, you'll find that, wow, this makes that beautiful shot that I've seen before that I really like, and this is how it's done. You know, not everything has to be in focus, you know, the same way that your background is out of focus uh, using 85mm uh, uh, f1.8 and you've got tremendous bokeh while you're doing is you're applying motion instead of bokeh to your background for compositional effect um, in portraiture for example you're, you're applying motion to the 99 percent of uh, your slower shutter release such that instead of bokeh you're actually getting action you're actually getting light trails and motion trails you're actually giving uh, you're giving compositional depth to your photograph to elicit the premise that motion is going on and uh, just start experimenting with rear curtain sync it doesn't matter if you're hand holding at a fourth of a second okay whatever your speed light captures at the last uh, fraction of a second at the very end of the shutter release at one quarter of a second for example is what you're getting and that is going to freeze your foreground or depending on what your power setting is it's going to freeze the entire subject typically of course it's just going to be uh, your foreground uh, subject that uh, that you're composing for. So start experimenting with a rear curtain sink. Speed light use is not that complicated. When somebody actually looks like an SP900 or 910 like this, uh, you know, they're greatly intimidated because the thing is nothing short of a bloody computer and, you know, you can go into the modes and uh, the menu buttons and, you know, it can become intimidating. It's like, well, it, it was hard enough for me to figure out how to use my camera, and now I gotta figure out how to combine it with the use of this overtly complicated speed light but it really you know if you take it in little bites it, it's not difficult at all and a lot of these things are very minor irrelevancies that uh, almost nobody uses but using some of the really important features that we talked about before uh, for stroboscopic effect and rear curtain sync I mean you bought this expensive speed light uh, for a purpose and uh, using some of its uh, extremely useful uh, uh, attributes uh, for compositional value is not that difficult so thanks for watching sorry this video was short and I didn't have a test sample to upload but the premise is for you to start experimenting around with stroboscopic effects with your speed light and rear curtain sync with your speed light um, because uh, the more you experiment the more you can actually enjoy shooting at least most people do and uh, that will open up new avenues for engaging your uh, compositional expanding of the horizons of what you know you're trying to do with your photography if you can translate what is in your mind to the back of the image sensor and record it then that will bring greater happiness to you uh, uh, better expansion of your skills and the list goes on and on and on so thanks for watching and catch you later